International discourse refers to caste-based discrimination based on work and descent. This reality is seen across the globe, but it is often misunderstood to be a South Asia-centric reality. Discrimination based on work and descent is a global phenomenon, affecting more than 260 million people worldwide. Dalits, scheduled castes, Harijans, Barakumin, Osu, Oru, Romani, Wilombo, and other communities. They comprise a little less than 4% of the world's population. Of these, 260 million, around 210 million or 80% live in South Asia. India, 16.6% .6 of the total population or 201 million. Bangladesh, 3.5 to 5.5 million. Pakistan, approximately 330,000 to 2 million. Sri Lanka, 4 to 5 million. Nepal, 13.6% of the total population or 3.6 million approximately. Nepal has also suffered very much from this caste, caste system, untouchability and discrimination prevailing in the social system. That now we are overcoming this situation by implementing the constitutional vision, by implementing the caste-based discrimination act. I think because, uh, because of this constitutional and legal provisions, uh, we can educate the people, we can even train the judiciary, even we can uh, uh, co-work with the civil society uh, to uh, overcome the situation and bridging the gap between uh, uh, so-called upper caste and the uh, lower caste. Discrimination based on caste or work and descent is a serious human rights violation and infringes upon the basic principles of universal human dignity and equality as it differentiates between inferior and superior categories of individuals because of their inherited caste status. These communities are at the bottom of the caste hierarchy of the social structure in the region. They are distinguished based on their occupation, which is considered to be low status. They live in segregated spaces and are severely discriminated and restricted in accessing socio-economic and political resources and opportunities. They continue to be subjected to traditional or and modern forms of untouchability practices or the imposition of social disabilities by reason of their birth into low castes. Caste is one of the factors that result in multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination against certain groups of women. Women and girls from low castes are particularly vulnerable to violation and denial of their rights in both public and private life. They are often the victims of caste-based violence, including severe forms of sexual violence. It is being said by some that the caste system originates from the division of labor. Dr. Ambedkar has said it is not a division of labor, but a division of laborers. And this is also something that we are witnessing within the work of our organization. What we see is that child labor, bonded labor and other forms of labor exploitation whether it is in brick kilns, stone quarries or even in garment factories, that low in caste means low in class and low in class means low in caste. So there is a clear overlap between the caste that you belong to and the options and the opportunities that you have for social upward mobilization. 
discrimination based on caste or work and descent also leads to extreme exclusion and dehumanization of communities who are often among the most disadvantaged populations, experience the worst socio-economic conditions and are deprived of or severely restricted in the enjoyment of their civil, political, economic, social and cultural rights. If we are to collectively achieve the commitment to leave no one behind and ensure the credibility of the post-2015 development agenda, the principles of transparency, accountability, participation should be at the center of sustainable development, its implementation, follow-up and the review of this new agenda. If citizen participation is not rooted in the post-2015 agenda, a critical opportunity to enhance ownership and accountability of the agenda at all levels will be lost. In the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, states should consider including caste-specific indicators to ensure that the Sustainable Development Goals and their targets address the situation of affected groups. Upholding basic human rights for all is a challenging path which involves all of us from international organizations such as the United Nations to governments and ordinary citizens in their everyday life. They all have something to contribute to the noble cause of making this world more just. Comprehensive national action plans and budgets to combat discrimination based on caste and analogous systems should be urgently developed and implemented in caste-affected countries. I urge all states to have targeted attention to the situation of the poorest and more socially and economically excluded and marginalized communities to break the vicious cycle of discrimination, poverty, inequalities and injustice. Special measures, including reservations, quota systems and or schemes should be put into place and enforced in specific areas, including employment, education and public and political institutions in order to guarantee the effective participation and representation of affected communities in public life. We should also remember the numerous positive steps that have been taken in this regard. Constitutions have been amended, specific legislation and affirmative actions have been adopted, and special commissions have been established and movements were formed to advance the rights of all those who have been historically marginalized and discriminated. Let us hope that such positive practices will continue and that the United Nations 2030 Agenda and its set of sustainable development goals will indeed provide us a new platform for action and fulfill the promise to leave no one behind. The Human Rights and Development Framework at a global level needs to recognize, acknowledge, address and prevent discrimination based on caste or work and descent. The draft United Nations principles and guidelines for the effective elimination of discrimination based on caste or on work and descent should be promoted by states and endorsed by the Human Rights Council.